The right paint job on any car or truck can be its most vibrant feature. The mix of color, logos, even artwork have to have a balance that works. What you do on a show car would be overkill for a daily driver. Purpose is paramount. Bodywork, stripping, and apparently we're going into paint. That's what I call being a little aggressive. Hey, Keith, what are you doing with this? Oh, we're taking the hinges off of this. My responsibility on the build was uh, fixing the tailgate. Had uh, several small dents in it. Um, had areas where we had actually cut it and uh, welded new pieces in it. We need to get some primer on the cab and all the other pieces. Now, in order to do that, we're going to have to get our body panels, go over them, and make sure that there's no imperfections or anything that may uh, ruin the finish. We were working on the tailgate when we found out that one side was slightly low. We went ahead and used a MIG welder, built the edge up, and squared it off with the grinder. And afterwards, we went ahead and mixed some body filler up um, on a non-porous mixing board, and uh, we just got a little mixture with the correct amount of hardener, and we went ahead and taped off the panel and spread our body fillers on. When working with body filler, I prefer to mask the panels with tape once you spread your filler on, you just pull the tape off and you just feather edge the uh, edges and blend it all in. A lettered tailgate is arguably the most intricate piece of sheet metal on this truck. It's all tight and tiny details. This is just another type of body filler. It actually will uh, spread really thin and sands very, very easily. It's okay. used to uh, just you know cover up minor imperfections, sanding scratches and stuff like that. Making this tailgate show quality is a challenge requiring hours of work. So we got to prep this? All right, Dan, yep. That's what we got to do to this panel right here. Um, there's a couple little areas that we have to uh, pay close attention to. We use the spoon and dolly to uh, bring down those peaks up in where the lead work was previously done. Previously had done the lead work on the fenders and we stripped the, the E-coat off. Um, we did have a little bit of uh, surface rust starting to accumulate, so Dan helped us out and he got the DA and went over the whole entire fender, removing that minor surface rust. It's very important to take all that stuff off before you apply any type of paint. It's true, rust never sleeps. I think it's a song, too. At this point, we really don't want to cut any corners. We want to make sure all of our body work and all of our body panels are nice and square and the way they should be, because this is a very important stage. Once that paint gets on there, you know, you, you can't turn back. Straight and square requires a few hundred hours of labor. So you want me to put this glass in, right? Yeah. Do you, do you have extras? Oh, <laughs> yeah, we got plenty of inventory. We want to make sure that all the glass fits correctly. We don't want to paint this truck and have issues later where the glass doesn't fit. So you lay your weather strip in first into the uh, cab, and then you fit your glass, and then you put the interlocking strip in. We use a series of wedges. Um, you can use a ground down screwdriver, or anything that's not sharp that you can use to poke or pry with. And you got to be sure that you use a lot of soapy water, otherwise nothing will go together. Poking and prying around glass isn't a worry if you're careful with the tools. It's the cleaning process that can catch you off guard. <laughs> it's an easier way to clean it. <laughs> I think Keith might be better suited for the glass job. It's clear that I'm a take things off type. Yep, clear as glass. Uh, we also want to make sure that we strip that we chemically strip the cab and all the body panels uh, before we got it into the paint booth. I had uh, help from the guys, Jason and Brett, they uh, stripped down the cab. Um, basically, we want to remove all the E-coat. Um, the E-coat or EDP coating that they put on this stuff is uh, pretty much prim primarily just for uh, rust protection during shipping. The E-coat was removed by using a chemical stripper. Um, there's several different ways to do it. Uh, you know, blasting or dipping and stuff like that. But, uh, you know, since this is fairly thin stuff, we just went ahead and used a chemical stripper to remove all the E-coat. My name is Brett Detlefson. I am the uh, graphic designer at Classic Industries by day and a uh, custom painter by night. The products that we use today was all uh, House of Color products. We use uh, direct-to-metal epoxy primer as well as their catalyst that's made to mix the epoxy primer and reducer to thin it out quite a bit. My preference in working with the paint is uh, using about 20 PSI in the gun, and I usually keep my gun about a foot away from the, from the panels, uh, keeping my uh, spray pattern nice and even and about a 50% overlap. 
20 PSI, 12 inches, 50% overlap. See, paint by numbers does have practical applications. Dan was helping today in some products we were testing called Al's Liner. It's basically a uh, undercoating or and or a bed liner. What's uh, special about that is you can get it at many different colors. Al's Liner is a four-stage mixing process. You have a resin, which is part A. You have a acrylic, which is part B. A catalyst, which is part C. And a color of your choice, which we happen to use black today, which is the uh, final part, four parts. Chemistry aside, this liquid bed liner stuff is making me a believer. It's durable, strong, and quick to apply. Everything you want for the underside and high traffic spots. I thought that it uh, went well. I like the finish. It dries a little shiny at first, but as soon as the uh, sunlight hits it, the UVs will dull it down quite a bit. Looks pretty good. I agree. So we can use this underneath, and we could even use it on top of the running boards. Absolutely. Excellent.